Would you enjoy learning a new stamping technique? This is the video for you. I will take you step by step, teach you how to make this technique called split negative, and it has a positive impact. See what I did there? Welcome, welcome, my crafty friends. I am Dawn, creator Dee Dee Creates Crafts, and this is the channel for simple cards, helpful hints, duplicatable projects you'll be able to make yourself just by watching one of my videos. Come on in, I'm gonna turn the camera down and we're gonna create some crafts. Here we go, I'm turning it down. And let's line her up a little. Okay, you're gonna get a little bit of a glare until I move everything, so just ignore the little light right there. All right, the split negative. It's an older technique that's probably gonna be new for you, and it, oh, the positive impact it has, and it looks, just by looking at it, I'm like, eh, I can figure that out. Yeah, no, I couldn't. I had to teach myself, I had to learn it. So I want you to be patient with yourself, give yourself some grace, and let's just go step by step as you learn how to do this stamping technique. Now, first of all, I'm gonna show you why I made the card and which one. This particular card I made for my husband, and I'm going to show you why. It's because it's our wedding anniversary. 42 years, you guys. So if there's not a glare, I'm gonna show you our wedding picture, a little bit of a glare, it's in my photo album, but um, wedding picture from the 80s, what? Yeah, 1980, all right, there we are, we're so cute. So anyhow, I thought I'd share that with you for grins and giggles, and this is the card that I made for him for our anniversary. So, step by step, this technique, here's something so cool, it's gonna make two cards all at once. So we're gonna take our piece of cardstock. you're gonna cut it in half, it's gonna give you your two bases, eight and a half by five and a half, score at four and a quarter. There's our two bases, cause we're gonna make two cards. Then, part of step one again, is to make two layers. The layers can be the same color, they can be a color cardstock, or they can be white. For this demo, I'm gonna do one of each, since with the first card I showed you, I did the two in the night and navy. So I'm gonna play and try one of each. So these layers, and it's truly a layer, you'll need two, will be four by five and one quarter. Then I want you to cut three layers. I'm gonna give you some options. Either three layers of white cardstock or one layer of white cardstock and two layers of printer paper, something a little lighter weight. And I've not played with that. I'm telling you in theory, not in practice right now, but that is an option for you. So here's your measurements for the three layers, three and three quarters by five. One of these layers we're gonna use for the stamping technique, and the other two, we're gonna, because we're gonna cut our, you'll see, we're gonna cut the design in half, two of your layers of the same size, we're gonna use kind of as a base, something to hold our adhesive onto as we adhere our two different color sides down. So that's the method to the madness for your three white layers. Then I want you to cut one color layer cardstock like I did here. And this is also going to be three and three quarters by five. And this is also for stamping. So you're gonna have one layer for stamping in white, one in color cardstock of your choice. Both these layers are the three and three quarters by five. Now, the reason, the reason I started my channel, Dee Dee Creates Crafts, is to introduce you to me, introduce you to Stampin' Up! products, then I wanna show you how to use the products you order with simple cards and projects like the technique we're doing here today. Ordering products that you see in my videos help support this channel, plus, you get some thank you gifts from me. And in the month of August, there's a huge sale, sale of the year, and you get more free stuff. Step two, that was my shameless plug for you right there. Okay, step two is to stamp on the cardstock. I've got my color cardstock all lined up. 
What is she lined up on? This is called a Stamparatus. It's a stamping positioning, I'm gonna call it machine, or a stamping positioning tool. This, what I like so much is, it is less expensive than Brand X that's out there on the market by ugh, 10 to $20. So a huge bang for your buck with this particular item from Stampin' Up, stamp positioning tool, let's call it. I ordered it, not just for this technique, I've had this a while because when I first started with my stamping, I was not confident with my stamping, or and you know what I'm talking about, and especially if you're new, maybe you'll stamp and then this side's not dark enough, or you stamp a sentiment and can't read it, and you're like, oh, if I could only stamp that a second time, it'd be perfect, but there's no way to do that unless you have a stamp positioning tool. The other thing for this project, this particular technique, you're gonna either need a slightly larger stamp or a grouping of stamps that you can pre-arrange for yourself, which I've done here. This particular grouping, it's from a stamp set called Happiness Abounds. Pretty, pretty, pretty. So I'm gonna put this here. Now, with your step two, we're gonna stamp on the color cardstock. However, we're gonna use a clear ink called Versa Mark. I'm gonna show you right here. And I'm gonna stamp all over, all over. And this is great and it's pretty much basically uh, created for heat embossing, which is part of the stamping technique. But this, I've got other techniques to make um, some pretty backgrounds. I will teach you in a different video using this Versamark, because that was what I shared with you with one of the reasons I started DD Creates Crafts. When you order products, Stampin' Up! products with me, I'm gonna show you more than one way to use it so you really, really, really feel like you're getting a good value for your dollar because you're gonna know how to use your products one, two, three, five, ten different times for one product. So I'm gonna go ahead and stamp this up with the Versamark. Then I'm gonna use clear embossing powder and a little goodie called Embossing Buddy, which is this little, looks like a, bean bag, but it's filled with a powder. The powder helps your ink adhere where you want it, not where you don't want it. It gets rid of grease from our hands, not literal grease like I've been eating fried chicken, but just the natural oils that come off our fingertips. So the embossing buddy first, then onto your cardstock, the ink, and I put the stamp pad behind the lid just to make it a little easier for me to manipulate. It's not necessary. It's just anything that makes our life easier. It's, <coughs> excuse me, please, something that I wanna do. So, we've got that in place. I'm gonna turn it upside down. Actually, I'm gonna close the lid. It's not really upside down, is it? With my fist, I'm just gonna brush it across, lift, Looks pretty stinking good. I see a little bit, I'd like a little bit more on those leaves. So I am gonna add just a little more ink in a couple areas. And like we discussed earlier, look, I can close it again because it's in the exact same spot. Now I'm gonna pull it away, keeping my uh, magnets really far apart. Then I'm gonna use the clear embossing powder on my cardstock, and I will show you what it all looks like. All right, then you're gonna have a white powder on top of your stamping like this. Then you're gonna use a heat tool that looks like a hair dryer, but we're gonna, I'll talk about that with your step three, for which is step three, your embossing. For right now, I'm gonna put this aside so we can get on and stamp the white piece of cardstock. Now, my stamp arrangement is still in the same spot. So what I did was just do some little pencil marks and I, it just shows me where to line up my cardstock for this second layer. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do two things. I'm coming in with my Tahitian Tide, which is the color ink pad that's matchy-matchy with my cardstock. 
mash it down. Looks like a hot mess. Should get all over my cardstock, doesn't it? But it did not. And now I'm just gonna clean that up with my chamois, which I don't need to, but, well, for the stamping I do, to clean the around it, I don't need to. But right now I'm cleaning it up and you're gonna see why, because this particular ink pad I'm using, the Tahitian Tide, was that our name? Yes. Is not particularly juicy. If it was a newer one or wet, 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 we could go ahead and put our embossing powder on this alone. However, for me, it wasn't juicy enough. So I came back with my Versamark and that's why I cleaned my stamp real good. That's why I was buying time for us by letting my Tahitian Tide ink dry. I'm coming back with my clear Versamark and I'm stamping again right on top of the Pretty Color ink. And this will gay roan tea that we have. So this is white with the color. So now we're gonna come in with clear versus white. I hope I did all right by that one. So let's do clear, clear. The first one we wanted white because it's on the color. This one we want clear because it, it, we want the blue ink to show. Looks like I need a little more powder. So there you have it. Couple things. Pretend, you can't tell with this white, I can see it, but I've got a little bit of powder right there that shouldn't be there. I think I forgot to use my embossing buddy is probably why. But come in with just a child's paintbrush and you could get these at the dollar store and just brush it away, okay? So in, the essence of time, what I've gone ahead and done for us is I have preheat embossed our layers that we're gonna need. So let me get my other guy. So I've got the stamp on the Tahitian Tide with the white embossing powder, then the clear embossing powder on top of the Tahitian Hide, Tahitian Hide, Tahitian Tide ink. So it's matchy matchy, but oh so different. So we are finished, unless you're gonna make a label, which I did for the cards, but I've pre-done those for us. Um, we are finished with the stamp apparatus. I'm gonna bring in the paper trimmer. I can move that. And we'll get on with our technique. Now down in the description section, I will have links to everything, and there's a couple tools with heat embossing that are really cool, and I think you'll enjoy having them in your crafty toolbox. Now with this, we are gonna cut it, you guys. This one I cut not centered. I went at a little bit of an angle just to give it a little more pizzazz. So on that note, you can cut your design directly down the middle, you can cut it horizontal, you can cut it at an angle, you can cut it into squares. Whatever you want for yourself, know that will work following just the basic techniques of this technique. So your stamp one was to cut everything, stamp two was to do our inking, our stamping, and then our embossing powder on top of everything. Are you having fun, you guys? Have you learned something yet? So far, so good. We need to learn a little more for this technique, do, do, don't we? However, if you're having fun, do this. Go boop and hit the like button. That'll tell YouTube that you like this video and you think other crafty friends should find us as well and uh, craft with us. All right, so if this is three and three quarters, half of that would be about, let's see, there's three and a quarter, oh, I don't like that measurement, which would be, I'm looking right here. Let me show you what I'm looking at. It's before the three quarters, but more than half, so five eighths. It would be one and five eighths. And if you want this ruler, I'll put down uh, 
in the description section a link. You can get this for free, you guys. Just go to my Stampin' Up! website. Go to, I think it's called Projects. Maybe it's called Files Projects. Anyway, look for a picture of the ruler and print it for yourself. This is my cheat sheet. I use this anytime there's an odd, what I call really odd, little fraction. Do I like math? Yeah, not really. If I can get away with not measuring, that's so happening. But sometimes we just have to, you know? So one and five eighths, I'm gonna do the exact same thing with our white. So now we have, oh, I think I, did I? No, okay, my measurements are off, whatever my halvesies were, so ignore that part, but it's a mistake and it'll still work. See how much thicker that part is than this? So I was way hunky-dory off with my measurements, but this'll just look cute and pretty, just like the first one where half is a little, look, I made the same math mistake with that one. Whatevs, I'm creative. You creative, you mathy. Tell me below. Oh, I bet you're both and then, I'm just gonna be jealous, I'm just gonna be jealous. Tell me if you can do math and you're creative. I'm gonna be so jealous, jealous for you, because you're my friend. But if you know what I'm talking about, about math, ooh, tell me that in the comment section too so I can feel your pain and just, uh, we can just relate to each other. Here's where it comes in where we get to Use our technique for making the two cards. Oh my stars, you see how pretty it's gonna look already? I am gonna get out my silicone glue mat because when I start my gluing, I don't want glue to stick to my base paper here. Here's the host code. When you order using my August host code, and this is August 2022. Pretend you find this video two, three years from now. You don't use this host code, but find out what the most recent one is. However, use this house code. You're gonna get free stuff from me. Woo! I love free. Do y'all love free? I like love free. I just do. Okay, now let me see where we're at. Heat embossing was our step three. And I didn't physically heat emboss, but I did bring it up to the point where we would use the machine. I just, I'm gonna just show it to you. It looks like this. You turn it on, it sounds like a hair dryer. And it heats up your powder to create this shiny surface. Now my heat gun, heat tool is Brand X. It's a company that went out of business, but Stampin' Up! has this exact same item in a pretty, uh, just a basic brown. So if you already have a heat gun, use what you already have. Do not order another one. But if you are new and need a heat gun, then I have the link below for the Stampin' Up! heat gun. So that was your step three, was embossing. And the other thing, because we're using white, as you're stamping your step three with uh, your ink and all that jazz, check your fingers for ink because <sighs> When I was practicing a couple times, a little bitty bit right there, I got some blue ink on my white, which I did not want to do. All right, let's get on with our step four. Step four was to cut your embossing layers either in thirds or half or horizontal or angled or in quarters. I'll say it again for you. So that's where we start with our step four. We've got our little layer on the bottom, which can be your printer paper or it can be some thin layered cardstock. And now we're gonna glue. So I'm gonna start with the blue because it's easier for me to see and I'm gonna adhere that down. So I, yes, you guys, I do recommend glue. Yes, I do for this particular step because it's gonna give you some wiggle room. And I try to remember to teach this in a few repeated videos, but when you first squeeze your glue bottle, start away from the end and drag it forward. Because see the blob that first comes out? We don't want the blob on the end. And then just barely squeeze ink out. And with the tip of your bottle, just push the, I said ink, I meant glue, push the glue around. And I'm going right up to the edge so if it smushes out, it'll be okay because I've got my silicone craft sheet which, let me make sure I'm going in the right direction, and I am. You're gonna go right up to the very end, as close as humanly possible, with this first one. And I'm just gonna use a little 
crease tool to make sure it is pressed down on all my edges. Now, this comes some more of your technique. So pay attention, pay attention, because I want you to feel successful with your first card. When we go to line this up, pretend for some reason, for some reason it's a little off. Let me see if mine is and I can show you. Mine's a little off, so it'll be a little advantageous to show you. Um, can you see right here yet? There's a little bit of my base that shows through. Ignore it. The important part is going to be lining up our flower because this part, yes, I gave you measurements. Yes, I did. However, they may change. These may change just a hair, and I mean literally hair, because I don't know where that southern accent came from. Literally a hair because we have to make adjustments for the stamping. Sometimes just slightly. The stamp positioner does a great job and typically lines this up to perfection. Make sure it there's no gaps. And let's glue the other side. The, I mean, not the other side, you know what I'm talking about, the second piece. So I'm gonna start with a darker color. You may be using black, you may be using navy, you may be using gray, whatever color you want. Just make sure you have a matching coordinated uh, ink pad to match your, so this is gonna be reversed. Yep, so I'm gonna do this on this side. There we go, yep, there we go. <laughs> Found it! It's like a Where's Waldo for my tools sometimes. Even though I keep them in a little basket, nice and organized, I don't know, I think it's my brain that misses it and not the actual. They're not really lost. All right. So with the glue, again, your secret to success is to line up your flower, not the paper, when you're coming in with your second layer. And no gaps. Make sure it is nice and nice and nice put together. So now, yo, let me get my trimmer again. And I got a secret tip for you with the trimmer too. All right, can you see it right there? There's a little bitty, 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 bitty gap. So I'm gonna turn this over and I'm gonna line this up with the edge of my groove right there, the outside edge of the brown. Can you see right there? Now here's the trick. Learned it the hard way. You, I don't want you to start, instead of starting to the edge and running it up over, I want you to move your blade and start it already on the paper. And it just will give you a nicer cut because I experimented with one and I'm making sure everything else is lined up and I feel good about it. All right, so that's the only little baby. Here, this one too. And yes, I'm turning it upside down because I felt that helped as well, but start your blade on the actual cardstock and it'll give you a nice crisp cut versus I push, push, push when I started off the paper and went across it and it bunched, 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 bunched up. Ugh. It was a hot mess and it was not pretty. It was not cute. So I want you to learn from my mistakes so you'll feel success from step one, day one, with your cards. So this is why I did two different color layers. I wanted to play and see what it looked like with a blue base versus a white base. And of course, both our card bases are in the white. And you will need a heavy duty, thicker white for your base and then the thin white for your layers. So that's gonna look pretty cool. 
For my taste, I see already, I like the blue layer versus the white layer underneath. And so I need you to tell me what's your thoughts. What are your thoughts? The blue layer or the white layer? Where we have more white and white and white and white. What do you think? Do you have a preference? Now, another thing you have to remember, I have to remember this too, is to, where you go, here we go. Do your twine. Let me see if I put it, it went on this one. It did not go over that layer, but that would not be a bad look. If you want your twine to go over both these layers, that looks just as cute. I, for myself, wanted the layer to go just over the technique. And let me show you something else I learned from plan. All right, I was putting it down below, and then I would put my label on, and it'd be, not quite centered. So kind of lay your label down approximately where you want it and then eyeball where you want your twine to go, blah, blah, blah. So it's not too close to the very bottom. And then I've got the little glue dot guys right here. And, oh, Nelly, good thing I caught that. Yeah, it's a little higher than I usually do, which is what I want. So this is just my personal preference. I like to keep it really tight on one end and go a little. Isn't that just a pretty little technique right there? Not a technique, what would you call that, you guys? Um, oops, that's funny. All right, there we go. Let's call it layout, for lack of a better word, layout of your baker's twine. Sorry, it's taken so long. Go ahead and just uh, kind of just scrub right through the slow park part, the pokey pu puppy part, where I'm overthinking stuff. Now this, I do recommend, before you adhere it to your layer, this is the first part, the decorative part with your twine, but I want you to pop this up because it just shows and tells your, um, your new technique so much better. It's really, really pretty. Popped up. I just feel like it shows. And I wanna know if you feel the same way when you make yours. So this is gonna just pop it right up. Give it a little height, give it a little shadow effect, give it a little depth. When we adhere it down with the dimensionals, the little foam pop-up guys, onto the actual layer. And it may wind up being a little, your margins longer on the top than the sides, depending on how much, if any, you had to trim. I'm gonna put the blue on that side because there's so much white. And if I can't find the white, we'll just pretend it's there. There it is. I already put the dimensionals on this. Then we'll add us some bling and we are done. Yeah, this is cute. It's just such a cool technique, don't you think? I hope you enjoyed it. And I'm gonna put, last but not least, some uh, of the matchy-matchy little bling to go with it. I'm gonna put one right there because I see a tiny smudge <laughs> of ink from my fingers. What the hecky? So I'm gonna put one there. And last but not least, let's put one do we want it way over there? I'm gonna put it right there. Always put odd numbers, so I'm gonna suggest your three or five. No, I did not glue that down. I don't wanna take the time. So I'm gonna put this guy down, and then this will look like this on the other side after I add some of the colored twine, and I think that'll add a little more to the color. But there's your difference right there, and then I've got the darker version that I did for my husband's anniversary card. Look. Amazing. Do you guys love this? It's different, isn't it? Was it what you expected as far as the how-tos? I swing, I thought I could just look at it and do it, but don't you feel like you need a little bitty bit of instructions? I do. Okay, more videos like this one? You wanna come back and see me again? Hit the subscribe button right now while it's fresh on your mind. Now, 
It is time to say goodbye. I'm going to turn the camera up. So remember to tell me in the comments section how you're doing with your math. And remember to go to the Stampin' Up! website and get you one of my free rulers. And then, what do you think? Are you going to make this? I'm hoping you'll make it. I want to see it. When you make it, I want to see it. So go to Dee Dee Creates Crafts Facebook page and post it for me. And we have... On Mondays, we have a card challenge. You can enter that and get some happy mail. And on Saturdays, we do a virtual card swap where we just share ideas with each other. And I invite you to participate with that as well. And that's on Facebook. Now, it's time to say goodbye. Thank you for joining me. I want you to remember the three things. Remember to subscribe. Remember to like the video. And remember, most importantly, come back and see me again real, real soon. If you want to see some more techniques, go to the top of the homepage and you'll see playlists and then click on the one that says techniques and you'll find some more fun stuff that you can watch. And for my card class, there it the pictures are under the community button. So go ahead and play while you're up there, find some more videos to watch, learn some new techniques, join our community and by join, I mean, just look at it. Thanks for joining me, you guys. I'll have a fresh new video for you on Friday. Bye now.